Well, Jim, speaking of entertaining television. Well, I thought we were going to do the AEW ratings first. Well, I was going to talk about MeTV. No, but speaking of entertaining television, AEW Dynamite this past week was a three-hour block with Rampage on TBS <laughs> March 20th, 2024. Which, and by the way, did you see, according to what my Twitter folks were telling me, Uncle Dave's headline was, Collision Ratings Flat Rampage Up Big. Of course, because the people that would watch, the only people that would ever want to watch Rampage are already sitting there watching Dynamite. You didn't give them a break. So yes, put it back on its own. It's going to wither on the vine again. But I love how he frames the the dynamic here. Well, Jim, speaking of dynamic, <laughs> we will talk about the dynamic dynamite of this past week. And let's give it, this was a big episode. They've been plugging this, Toronto, Canada. They had the big 9,000 people and the big showdown of this epic feud that we had kind of thought was over with already between Edge and Christian. So... They had something to sell, and and the million dollar babies, Mercedes Money, and and uh, Will Ostrich, and our friend Mr. Okada, and so this heavily hyped episode. My God, are we are we off the charts here this week? Are we are we blowing the scale? Well, again, we have to tell the story as the three hour block, AEW Dynamite. From 8 to 10 p.m., on average, did 800,000 viewers. Mm. And AEW Rampage, from 10 to 11 p.m., although like the first several minutes at least were the finish of the previous show. Right. 541,000 viewers. The highest Rampage since January 6, 2023, and in the key demo since April 22nd, 2022. Well, yes, because when it's its own program, everybody has already known for quite some time that it sucks and it's on Friday night and why bother? But if it's attached to this program, so now Tony will be pitched, well, give us all three hours. But anyway, go ahead. You got a lot of numbers, uh, Mr. First Name Bunch of Numbers. Well, we start with quarter one. These are from WrestleNomics, put together by WrestleNomics. Quarter one, 8 to 8.15 p.m. The mercedes Monet Live promo and angle with Julia Hart, Sky Blue, Wuo Nightingale, and Chris Statlander. The Young Bucks, Kazushka Okada backstage angle, 911,000 viewers. Ouch! So, they got a million in the first quarter last week, but of course that's Big Bang Theory. So the Big Bangers have let them down somewhat, and the Million Dollar Princess, but nobody had any idea when she was going to be on, would they have had time yet? That's why we mentioned earlier, before we traveled through time, put her in quarter three and let's see, we'll, we'll know then whether anybody's going out of their way or not. But anyway, go go out of your way to go ahead. Well, before we get to quarter three, quarter two, 8.15 to 8.30 p.m., Eddie Kingston versus Kazushka Okada with picture-in-picture -picture ads, 838,000 viewers. Yeah, so there's the $6 million man, or however many millions, and we just lost uh, 73,000 people when he hit the screen. And, and let's bear in mind that we have not expected, and I don't think by the numbers we're probably going to see, uh, a drastic fall-off like when Riho main events this thing, because it's still two recognized names that they've been plugging, and they know it's the main event, so we are somewhat more consistent, I would believe, this week. Well, we go to quarter three, the continuation of Kingston versus Okada. The post-match with Pac... Swerve Strickland's backstage promo, an ad break, the Nightingale, Statlander, Monet, Stokely Hathaway backstage <laughs> angle. <laughs> That's, wait, that sounds like some kind of goddamn weird law firm. Say all those names again. Nightingale, Statlander, Monet, and Stokely Hathaway. There you, either that or maybe a Wall Street investment firm. And the start of Chris Jericho versus Hook. 
791,000 viewers. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So Jericho, I, I, his pay now may be being dwarfed by Tony's newest toys, but he's got the big 10-year deal, so much less the other two uh, bonus babies. He comes on the screen and drops it below 800. It's That's good to know. Well, we got a quarter four, 8.45 to 9 p.m., the continuation of Jericho vs. Hook, with picture-in-picture -picture ads, Adam Cole's rocking chair promo, whatever that was, an ad break, and Jericho's backstage promo, 735,000 viewers. Holy Christ, I thought they'd be somewhat more consistent here, but... So, since we got our first look at Jericho to the last look, they've lost 103,000 people. Well, <sighs> we, we go to the big 9 o'clock hour, 9 to 9.15 p.m., quarter 5. Will Ospreay's live promo, the Adam Copeland Christian Cage video, and Deanna Perrazzo and Tony Storm versus Mariah May and Tony... St oh, no, wait. Yeah, that's what it says here. What the hell? <laughs> says Deanna Perrazzo and Tony Storm versus Mariah May and Tony Storm. It was Thunder, Ro Ro Thunder and Storm were opposite each other. With picture-in-picture -picture ads. 758,000 viewers. So the third of Tony's Fabergé eggs, Will Ostrich, comes on the air at the top of the 9 o'clock hour and gets some 23,000 people. Okay. Now, again, I'll point out what AEW fans are pointing out and some of the wrestling reporters are. Strong competition. A lot From of things what? happening. Well, there's NCAA basketball. There's a lot of things happening in the world of sports. But, uh, okay, but they started... When things, are really hot, when things are really hot, was, was there always a big hit if other things were happening? Well, yeah, it, yes, it depends on, obviously, the final four... Uh, or the tournament, if it was on against Raw, which a Monday night it probably was, or, you know, whatever the fuck, or major shit. But what I'm saying to you is, it's the if somebody is going to tune into this show because they want to see something, and in every segment, another person that Tony Khan has paid millions of dollars to is coming out and people continue to turn it off in increasing numbers one right after the other it doesn't matter what the competition is does it you had them there to begin with you couldn't keep them they weren't fucking interested what is going on in the tournament at 8 45 that wasn't going on at 8 30 is what i'm asking and we brought it up earlier talking about the ratings before they came out last week things nosedived Things didn't pick up for Mercedes Monet, and they nosedived during the Okada and the Young Bucks, and the Riho main event, and Jericho did nothing to help. And look at this week. It just went straight down until Jericho was off the screen, until all those guys were done. Because Okada's been linked with the Bucks, and that's not going to help him. But anyway, quarter six. Six. 9.15 and 9.30 p.m., the continuation of Peraza and Rosa versus May and Storm, an ad break, Swerve Strickland versus The Butcher, and the Swerve Strickland Samoa Joe live confrontation, 765,000 viewers. Uh, now they're just kind of treading water. Well, the tread continues into quarter seven, 9.30 to 9.45 p.m., continuation of Swerve and Joe, and now Don Callis' live confrontation, an ad break, and the start of Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage I Quit match with picture in picture ads, 789,000 viewers. And they picked up a little bit more for what should have been, you know, equivalent in their universe to a pay per view match, Edge and Christian. It should have been a pay per view match. It should have been, probably, well, considering what else they put on there. Did they finish in any way uh, picking up strongly, though? Because they went so long crashing through so much in repetitive fashion. Well, again, overrun aside, it goes into Rampage this week, so we'll talk about all this. Quarter 8, 9.45 to 10 p.m., the continuation of Cage versus Copeland with picture-in-picture -picture ads, 
788,000 viewers. Oh, good Lord. I thought... I thought when I heard it was, you know, the, the same number as last week, but they started so much lower with the Big Bang audience that I thought that at least Edge and Christian would be above 800,000 for that, you know, main event. Uh, that's that's disheartening for them. Well, we now go to 10 to 10.15 p.m., which is the first quarter of Rampage. Now, the first six minutes of this are the finish of Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland and the post-match. Then a Bang Bang Gang promo. (laughs) (laughs) And then the acclaimed Ramp promo. 776,000 viewers. Oh, and they lost people at the top of the hour when they were going home after beating themselves up with all that shit. And then for the record, here's Rampage, 10.15 to 10.30 p.m., Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta versus Kyle Fletcher and Powerhouse Hobbs. Picture-in-picture ads and an ad break. 558,000 viewers. Oh, that's 218,000 people said fuck it? Well, again, this is... they can't take anymore? You're looking on the dark side. This is a record episode of Rampage. More people saw this than any other episode in a long time. Quarter two for Rampage, or I guess it would technically be three. Shibata versus Kevin Matthews. A Copeland Cassidy... I heard, I heard Matthews brained him. A, stop it. A Copeland Cassidy best friends, Matt Seidel, Top Flight, Action Andretti, Daniel Garcia backstage what? angle. The fuck? <laughs> Loud noises and words. What in the... <laughs> I, I don't know what any of this is, so it's taking me by surprise, too. Rocky Romero versus Kanosuke Takeshita with picture-in-picture ads. 454,000 viewers. Oh, boy. Followed by 10.45 to 11 p.m., Romero versus Takeshita continued an ad break, a video, and the start of Statlander and Nightingale versus Hart and Sky Blue Street Fight with picture-in-picture ads. 485 thousand viewers six minute overrun 11 to 11 oh six are you PM. are you ripping 11 to 11 oh six p.m six minute overrun for the continuation the finish of statlander and nightingale versus heart and blue 543 thousand viewers uh, psh, what was scheduled to come on at 11 o'clock i believe i'd have put that on at 10 jesus christ so they They get a three-hour block of primetime national cable television. They start with 911,000 viewers and end up with 485,000. Jumping shit with it. When we used to do two-hour specials on WBKI here uh, locally in Louisville for OVW, we would still, our main events would do the best Numbers or equal the best numbers of the program from 8 to 10 o'clock. It's not like adults are going to sleep at 10 o'clock. They're just, the program is putting them to sleep. And this pattern, every single person that he has paid a large amount of money to or and or made an executive vice president, every time they came on the screen, the show lost fucking viewers until finally... The only people that gained anything appreciable were Edge and Christian for the first part of their match, and by the time that they went so long and broke so much, they'd lost 10,000 of those people, 12,000, whatever. And I mean, that's normal fluctuation at that point, but you know, they kept them at the end, but nobody else could keep them to get there. <sighs> well, that was AEW, Big House in Toronto. Previous week, a big house in Boston. The television viewers are not there like they used to be. But again, there's a lot of competition, and uh, people are getting rid of cable. And oh, AEW, there's an all-night gas station. AEW is doing just fine. 